the Lord. Thank God for being here today, tonight, in this service. I was waiting to get to the sanctuary. It's been one of those days. I need the sanctuary. I need the presence of the Lord that comes when I gather with his people. I feel his presence every day because he's with us. He's omnipresent. Wherever we are, he is. But there's something about when we gather together in this place that he does mighty things for us, that his spirit rests, rules, and abides. And so I love this place and I love being with you. Last week, Pastor had talked about those situations that make it hard for us to trust what God is doing. He had said that we, that God doesn't ask us to figure him out. He just asks us to trust him. Amen. So tonight we want to talk to you part two of seven things to do when God doesn't make sense. Pastor uh, went over the first three for your remembrance. Number one, keep your focus on God. Number two, remember his infinite love for you. Number three, still believe in miracles. Yes, right. And so tonight we'll start with number four. Remember our times of trial lead to strength. Right. There are times you just have to encourage yourself and say this trial is not to destroy me, but it is to build me. It's not to take me out, but it's to bring me up to a new level in God. Rest assured, if God brings us to it, he will bring us through it. I think there's two important things that believers need to do, need to do in order to have success on this Christian journey. The first is to Know how to pick yourself up after a fall. Mm -hmm. Scripture says all have sinned and fallen short of God's Amen. glory. So even after we've received his saving grace, there are times when we're going to miss the mark. Right. But you have to know how to pick yourself up, receive his forgiveness, right. forgive yourself, and move forward. <laughs> move forward. Don't get stuck in that place. Yeah. Repent. Do what the scripture says. Repent. Confess. And he's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us. He'll forgive us and he'll cleanse us of all unrighteousness. So that's the first thing you want to do. Another thing you need to know how to do as a believer in Christ is to encourage yourself. Encourage yourself. The scripture says David encouraged himself in the Lord. You need to know how to get into the word, let the word get into you, and speak some things over your life. What, what does this word say about you? What does it say about your situation? Learn how to encourage yourself. It's wonderful for our brothers and sisters to encourage us. We receive encouragement from the leadership here, but there are times when you just have to speak something for yourself. It says faith comes by hearing and that by the word of God. Sometimes you need to hear yourself say what the word of God has said. So learn how to encourage yourself. First Peter 5 and 10 from the NIV. I think all of the scriptures I have tonight are from the NIV. And the God of all grace, we know his grace is sufficient, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, he said, a little while, trouble doesn't last always. I know it seems sometimes that you won't ever make it through. When will this be over? How long? It's been two days. How long is this going to last? But he said, a little while. Will himself Will himself, God is the one that's going to do the work. Right. He, will, he will restore you. Amen. Says he'll make you strong, able, competent, on, powerful, yeah. firm, securely fixed in place, Amen. and steadfast, Amen. unwavering, firm in purpose. You need to 
seek the Lord and find your purpose. Because when you know your purpose, you won't get all entangled with things that don't fulfill it. All right. All right. All right. My girlfriend always says no is an anointed word. <laughs> you can't say yes to everything. <laughs> everything doesn't fulfill your purpose. Right, Lord. There's 24 hours in the day. Mm -hmm. Everyone has the same amount of time. Mm -hmm. You can't do everything, but those things that are in line with God's will for you, your purpose, now you need to be about that stuff. Amen. That's what you need to invest your time in, that which will fulfill God's purpose, so he will make us steadfast. Amen. God uses our trials to produce greater faith and strength if we allow it. If we allow it. If we don't learn and grow from the things we experience, we're subject to repeat them. Yes. Amen. Test. You have to make a passing grade so you can go on to the next level. All right. yep. Experience with God will teach us something about him, or it'll teach us something about ourselves, Amen. or it'll do both. You learn more about his character. Amen. You experience more of his grace, his mercy. Lord. And you can find some places that you are strong. Yeah. Oh, I'm doing pretty good in that area. And you can find some places that, oh, Lord, help me. Amen. Have mercy on me. Amen. I need to do better. Right. Help me, Lord. Yeah. Number five, believe God has a perfect plan for your life. Now we're talking about seven things to do when you when God doesn't make sense. You don't understand what's going on. Believe he has a perfect plan. Amen. Believe that he is at work in your life and that he's working his plan. Yeah. His plan. His thoughts. His ways. Far above our ways and thoughts. Amen. Jeremiah 29 and 11 on the list of my favorites. I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. You may not know all the plans. Yeah. He may be giving you just enough light for the step that you're on. Right. But he says, I know the plan right. that I have for you. Right. And my plans are to prosper you, yeah. not to harm you. Yeah. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Yeah. Another translation says, an expected end. Yeah. 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 He desires to give you a hope and a future. An expected end. The one who knows the end from the beginning. Yes. He has a plan. And his plans are better for us than anything we can ever design for ourselves. Amen. But we have to trust the process. Yes. Yes. It's a process. You have a promise. You have provision. And in the middle is process. All right. All right. Sometimes it comes quickly. Sometimes there's a period of time. But trust the process. Because you can trust God. So when we don't understand what is happening. Why we're going through. How are things going to work out? How is this situation going to turn out in my favor? We can rely on his promise that he has a plan. And it's good. He has a good plan. We can trust his heart when we can't trace his hand. All right. Sometimes you don't see God's hand. What is he moving? What is he doing with this situation? Right. Come on now. But know that his heart is full of love for you. Yes. He has a good plan for you. Yes. And even when you can't see what he's doing, believe me, he's working. He's working behind the scenes. He never stops working. I love that part of the song. He never stops working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. Romans 8 and 28, another one on my list. All things. How many things? All things. Not some of the things. Not a few of the things. Not many of the things, right. not the good things, all, right. all things work together for good. Right. 
says they work together for good. Not that everything that happens to you is going to be good. All right. There on. are some sad times. Yes. There are some hard times. Yes. Some perilous times yes. that we will go through in this life. Job said, man that is born of a woman is of a few days and that full of trouble. Come on. That full of trouble. So we're going to experience some things. And being a Christian does not exempt you. If anything, it puts a target on your back. Because Satan's future is already established. He is lost forever. And he hates that you have another future that God has made provision for you. So he's out to get you. He's not your friend. He's not your friend. Scripture say he came to steal, kill, and destroy. Nothing good that he desires for your life. So don't get caught up. Don't get caught up in his traps. They're not for your good. Amen. God's plan for us is so good. Mm. Even when people have ill, evil, or ill intent, mm. he'll turn it in our favor. Yes. They can have the wrong motivation. Yes. But because he reigns, yes. he on. can take what they intended to harm you, and, and he'll good. make it good yes, for you. One of my coworkers used to have on her desk, if it's not good, it's not over. If it's not good, it's not done. He said he's working everything for your good. So if it's not good, you know, this, it's not, not too good, Sister Brown. It's not done. It's not done. It's not over. Think about Joseph. Everything that he experienced. Thrown in a pit. Sold by his brothers. His blood brothers. Falsely accused. Yes. Prison time. Yes. All the things that he suffered. Hadn't did anything right. other than shared some information too soon. All right. Shared a dream with people that didn't share the dream. All right. Amen. <laughs> that might have been his only fault. Amen. But other than that, he had done nothing wrong. But the brothers hated him. And so they threw him in a pit. Then they had plans to kill him. Mm. And one brother spoke up and said, oh, let, we, we can't go that far. Ruben. So they sold him yeah. into slavery. Yeah. And he worked. And, but everywhere he went, God's hand was upon him. Yeah, right. The favor of God was upon him. Yeah. In Polisher's house, yeah. in the prison yeah. walls, yeah. the favor of God was upon him. So much so that he was able to say in Genesis 50 and 20, when re reuniting with his brothers, yes. as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good to accomplish what is now being done. So back in that pit, God had a plan that as I get David, David, as I get Joseph Amen. where he needs to be, Lord. then he's going to save his brothers. Yes. When I get him to the place that I have planned for him, mm. then he will accomplish great things. The second in charge, Amen. he went from the pit to the palace. All right. But there was a process before he got there. There was a process before he got there. Max Lucado says, in God's hands, evil, intended evil, becomes eventual good. Amen. God is the master weaver, yes, taking all the threads of our lives, Lord. weaving them together to make something beautiful in its time. Yes. Yes. Exercise patience uh -huh. and trust God's timing. Amen. He, he's not on your timetable. All right, now. Time means nothing to him. Right, right. But he has a set time oh. and a pointed time, uh -huh. a due season yes. that you shall reap yes. if you faint not. Yes. Don't give up. Yes. Don't give up. Amen. Amen. Stay in the race. Stay in the fight. 
Keep doing what he has told you to do. Yes. Keep running the race. Stay in your lane. Yes. <laughs> know what he has set for you and do that wholeheartedly. Yes. You'll never come, come up short by doing what God has told you to do. Amen. He will bless. Isaiah 25 and 1 says, Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you and praise your name. For in perfect faithfulness, you have done wonderful things. Things planned long ago. Things planned long ago. You're not an accident. You're not an afterthought. Come on, you didn't come on the scene and God, oh, let me figure out. Oh, come on now, come what on. What can I do with her? Come on. What can I, <laughs> what can I plan for him? Come oh, on. no. Come on, come on. Before the foundations yeah. of the world, yeah. he chose you. Yeah. Before you were formed yeah. in your mother's womb, yeah. he knew you. Yeah. Come on. And has a plan for you. Yeah. Don't you ever let the devil or anybody else Woo! tell you Come on. that you don't belong here. Amen. Then it's not your time. Amen. God sees. He knows. And he has a plan. And he's working it out for you. Yeah. All right. Number six. Remember, he will never leave you. Amen. When it doesn't make sense, when you don't have any understanding, and the scripture says, lean not to your own understanding, right. but acknowledge him in all your ways, and he will direct your path. Yes. So remember, he will never leave you. We have the promise of his presence and his help. Psalms 46 and 1 says, God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in the time of trouble. So Jesus has promised, I won't leave you, I won't forsake you, I'm not going to abandon you. I'm with you, even to the end of the age. Even to the end of the age. You may have been abandoned by some others, some may have walked away. Understand, some people are in your life for a reason, some for a season. All right, now. When they are released to go, bye-bye. Uh, yes. Let them go. Come on, come Let on. them go. Your destiny is not tied to anyone that can say goodbye. Amen. Your destiny is not tied to them. No. So when they leave, let them go. Yes. The God that created the heavens and the earth, yes. every creature, the whole world belongs to him. All power belongs to him. And that's the God that says to you, I won't leave you. I don't care how dark the situation appears. I don't care how alone you may feel. I will not leave you. That is the God that cannot lie. So if he said, I won't leave you, I won't leave you. He's not capable of leaving. He can't go against his word. His word is forever settled in heaven. He said before a job or two that he let that pass away. That his word won't pass. He's not a man that he should lie. If he said, I am with you. Back. I'm with you. I'm with you. And because he is with us, we can go boldly and confidently doing all he has assigned to our hands. Audrey, you can go forward. You can go forward boldly. Confident, all that he put inside of you for the body of Christ. Come on. You go in your purpose. Because he is with us, we can go through each trial as an overcomer, destined.
to win. Have you read the end of the book? Have you read the end of the book? Do you know what it says? We win. We win. We're overcomers. Pastor said you have to overcome something in order to be an overcomer. Go through the process. Stay in the race so that you can overcome and win. We're destined to win. Amen. Number seven. This is the last one. Seven things to do when God doesn't make sense. Number seven. Know that God is listening. Amen. Know that he is listening. You can always talk to the Lord. He's available 24-7. Yes. He never slumbers. He never sleeps. No matter what time of day you call on his name, All right. you have his attention. Yes. He is a great friend, yes. a great confidant. Yes. You can tell him anything, <laughs> anything. You don't have to worry about it being repeated. Mm. He's not going to share that information. And sometimes it's just good to get that thing out of your head, yeah, off of your heart, yes. off your chest, off your shoulders. Sometimes you just need to talk it out, right. process it. And sometimes once you once you hear things out loud, sometimes they don't even make sense to you. You say, oh, 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 it out oh, so you can process it. But he, waiting, willing, wants to hear from you. Wants to hear from you. He's always listening, and he hears our faintest cry. Amen. The cry of your heart. When words don't even come out of your mouth. Glory, glory. Yes. He knows. Hallelujah. He knows. Before you say anything, he already knows. But he wants us to ask. Yes, right. He wants us to seek. Yes. He wants us to knock. Yes. He's given us instruction. And these things just let him know that we want him. Right. We want the things of God. Amen. So your cry, he hears that. Yes. Your unspoken request, he hears that. Mm -hmm. He knows that. Jeremiah 33 and 3 says, call unto me and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things, things you do not know. Amen. So the God of the universe tells us that we can call him. He's listening. He will answer and he will tell us things that we don't know. He will give us insight and wisdom. God will tell us things that we have no way of knowing had he not revealed it to us. Right. Amen. Things we would never have figured out on our own. Amen. We have that access yes. to the Father right. yes. that loves his children. The scripture says if any man lacks wisdom that you can ask that God will give it liberally and upbraid it not. He's not going to even be upset that you ask. Amen. Said liberally. So you just have to ask. Amen. Ask him for what you need. Ask him for what you need to know. Amen. My mother would always tell us to, to pray before we take a test, but she said you need to study first. All right. All so right. when you ask him to bring things remembrance to your remembrance, there needs to be something in there. <laughs> that he can work with. So be sure that when we're asking, that we're doing our part. He's going to do his part. That, that's settled. That's done. But let's do our part. 2 Kings 6, 8 and 14. Uh, I won't read all of those scriptures. I'll try, try to paraphrase it. But it's a story about Elisha. There was the Syrian army that was coming against the army of Israel, each time the Syrians would make a strategy to attack Israel, their plans would be spoiled through the revelation given by God to the prophet Elisha. Right. 
Elisha would inform the king of Israel, who would take precaution against their invasion. This happened several times. The king of Syria was enraged. He got his folks together and said, who is it among us that's on their side? He wanted to know who, who's the informant here? Right. Who's sharing information? All right. And one of his men spoke up and said, none of us, O oh king, it's not us, but Elisha, the prophet, tells the king of Israel the very words you speak in your bedroom. Come on now. <laughs> your private area. Woo! Your secret thoughts. Your plans. God is revealing that to the prophet. And the prophet is sharing that information with the king of Israel. So God can share some stuff with you. You wouldn't have any natural way of getting that information. But he can reveal revelation. He can open your eyes. Show you some things. God is able to warn us. He's able to lead us in a direction that leads us to blessing and provision. We only need to call on his name and seek his face. Amen. He can give you a word of wisdom, a word of knowledge needed at that particular time. So God is listening, but do we hear him? All right. wow. Sometimes we need to turn the volume of the world down. Right so we can hear him. Amen. Allow his voice to speak louder than the voice of fear. Amen. Louder than the voice of doubt and unbelief. All right. Come on. Louder than that doctor's report. Amen. Louder than our financial struggles. Amen. He is Jehovah Jireh. He provides. Yes, he louder. His voice needs to be louder than the voice of defeat. Don't let the enemy isolate you and get you separated off and talk to you. Because he'll do it. Oh, yeah, he will. He's busy. He's busy. My grandmother told me, you can't stop birds from flying over your head, but you can stop them from building a nest. Amen. Amen. So you can't stop every thought that comes, but you can respond, you can entertain, or you can dismiss. That choice is yours. Amen. That choice is yours. Amen. In this life, we're going to go through some things oh, yeah. that we don't understand. So the seven things we're going to keep our focus on God. Yeah. We're going to remember his infinite love for us. Mm, we're going to continue to believe in miracles. Yeah. We're going to believe God has a perfect plan. Mm. We're going to remember that he will never leave us, and we're gonna, we're gonna remember that he's always listening and attentive to our call. Amen. And if we do these things, we can make it through seasons of trial and come out on the other side wiser, stronger, better. Can you stand with me and say, make me better, Lord. Make me better, Lord. Make me better, Lord. Mm. The process. Yeah. I don't like going through processes. <laughs> right. But yet, we know there is one. I just want to read this scripture while you're standing. Colossians 2, verse 6 says, As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. In the process, Christians, born again, full of the Holy Spirit, walk therein. Amen. Don't be just swayed here and there by every wind and doctrine. Maintain the level. Be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. It says in verse 7, it says, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Wherever you are, whatever 
you're going through. Trust him in the process. Trust him in the process. Because he knows what, you, what you're going through, what you've been through, where you are, where he wants you to be. If we would just take a moment, and just like Sister Bradley said, block all the noise out. Hear from heaven. And then follow the instructions. Lead us. Guide us, O oh God. Come on, let's pray. Father, we God, we love you and we thank you for all that you're doing. We humble our hearts and we just bow before you, God. We are nothing without you. We, as a body of believers, need even the more of you. Your presence continues. A mind that has stayed on you will be in perfect peace. Help us to strive to reach out to you, oh God. Help us to keep our minds stayed on you. Help us to leap for joy sometimes, God. Help us to silence the doubters and start, start refraining from hearing what they have to say, but yet start standing on your word. When you say you never leave us, nor forsake us. We can go through the storm and the rain. <laughs> Hallelujah. Just like the pretty Hebrew boy. But I won't take it back and I won't take it and I won't turn take it down. But I got a praise that was going to come forward. In due season. Come on, sing with us. This is how we're going to do it, 